Hi, this is Mark Pritchard again with the second part of my um, WebLogic server with JRocket VE uh, demo. And I've gone ahead and created those servers now. So I've got virtual machine images for the admin server and manage server one and manage server two here on the console. And of course, I can start and stop those servers from the Oracle VM uh, admin console here. Uh, just by you know powering on and so on. I'll show you that in a minute, but first let me just show you how to where these live. So this is now in the uh, OVS, the OVM repository running pool. So that's you know slash OVS running pool, and you can see here. In fact, I created a a copy of these earlier, and you can see how Oracle VM actually puts a uh, a numerical identifier on the front of these. So in fact the ones we've just created now are, are these ones. They go up in sequence. So the admin server is this one and you can just uh, use that number to find it. And if we go there, you'll see in there we've got the system.img which is the big one. That's the main file. And then we've got the human readable vm.cfg which is this one here. And you can see there there's the reference. Here's the the mount point for the OVM repository, there's the running pool, here's the directory, and that's the disk image that we're going to mount uh, when we when the bootloader starts up the virtual machine. So the easiest way actually to start this up uh, if you want to see all the output is just to use the Zen master command xm, xm create minus c, so you can see the console output, point to vm.cfg, and you can just run it like this. And you can see the pygrub bootloader coming up here. We'll see the output messages from the server in just a minute. There we are. So now we can see JRocket uh, is starting up. There's the JRocket VE version identifier. You can see there we're running on the Oracle VM, the Zen hypervisor. There's the host name, so that's the networking side setup. You can see there that we've enabled the uh, SSH file access service on port 22. And now you can see the standard web logic startup. And of course you can see how much faster this is than having to start a virtual machine with a guest OS and go uh, and, and wait for that to finish booting up and then starting the, the JVM and so on. We've now got WebLogic Server, which is just about to transition into its running state, and then I can use the admin console in the normal way. While this is coming up, uh, finally let me just show you uh, how you would do this if you were using the console. So I could go in here, and if I want to start one of the managed servers, for example, I could go in here, and I could um, power on the virtual machine. So I guess just go like that. The virtual machine is now initializing. If I go back here, I can go over here to the uh, running pool and I can look for the manage server one directory. So I'll look for this one here. For example, that's where I would have started the virtual machine. What I can do here is um, XM list and I can see the virtual machines that are running and I can do, for example, um, Here's the manage server one. So I can actually look at the ID there, which is 16. I can do XM console 16. And now I can see those startup messages from manage server one, which is coming up. You can see we completed the startup of the admin server. You can see we're listening and we're in running mode. And you can now see uh, manage server one coming up couple of useful um, shortcut keys uh, if you for example if you want to see the virtual machine configuration file you can just press 1 and you can see the all the information there in the configuration that's extremely useful if you just want to see how that virtual machine image was started if you press 9 you can get uh, your uh, thread dumps and so on you can also get network stats if you press I It'll do a. Uh, it'll start a recording. You can wait for a little while. You press I again, and you get the network stats dumped out there. 
and you can do the same thing for uh, any of the other servers. Another useful uh, key to remember is F5. F5 will unlock it so that you can send a control break to shut down the virtual machine. For example, if I just do a control C in that window, as a safety feature, we catch that and we say shutdown is not enabled. If you press 5 or F5, you can do that and then you can press, you can do control C and you can simply shut it down like that and the virtual machine is, is gone then. So I can use this, this is just a, a normal WebLogic server now, so I can go in and for example, I could look at the uh, admin console and so on in the normal way and I just have to go to my virtual machine. So I'll go to Emperor VM1 and I'm listening on standard 7001. I'll go to the console. As you see, I can connect into the admin console just in the normal way. The first time up, of course, it'll take a few seconds to initialize. And then I have my WebLogic server domain in just the normal way. Here we are, I come in here, I've got my servers, and I can see everything else is just a standard WebLogic server domain. And you can see here that in fact for the machine, I've got a virtual machine. This is the node manager type is actually a virtual. And I'll show you in the next recording how I can connect to that uh, from either the admin console or using WLST. So if you want to see the definition for that, this is all part of the WebLogic server, standard WebLogic server domain configuration. I've just created a, uh, a virtual node manager machine type. And if I go in here, you can see that I've entered the address of the OVM manager. This is where the basically when we uh, make calls to start and stop servers and so on, we can't use uh, the standard node manager. There is no guest OS running here for these virtual machines. So what we do is we use the OVM manager, which offers a, a web service API, and we've overridden this functionality so that you can use all the same admin server, console uh, tools, or you can use WLST, the sort of, you know, NM start and so on commands to, to run this offline. And what happens is it connects using the web service API to the OVM manager, and then that uses the OVS agent on the server to actually start up the virtual machines. And so these parameters here, the listener address and port, are those for the OVM manager. And then I give the username and password for the OVM manager as well. And then for my servers, again, I associate them with a, a virtual machine type and then I can start and stop them in that way. In the next recording, I'll show you a little bit more about how we do that, and I'll show you some of the security features as well.